Cameo Magic presents whiteboard explanations. In this video, we're going to be walking through the Object Management Group, or OMG, the Standards Development Organization's different certifications in which they provide. We can see that they provide the Business Process Management 2 certifications, three different levels of that, four different levels of the Systems Modeling Language certification, one level of the Unified Architecture Framework certification, and three levels of the Unified Modeling Language 2 certifications. We're going to focus on the four different levels of SysML certifications which are offered, the SysML Model User being level 1, the SysML Model Builder Fundamental being level 2, the SysML Model Builder Intermediate being level 3, and the SysML Model Builder Advanced being level 4. We'll start by looking into the details of the level one exam, the model user exam. So this exam is going to be $350. It's a 90 minute exam with 90 questions. So it's a minute per question. You need a 62% to pass the exam. And the question format is going to be some diagram evaluation as well as small sentences. And the answers are going to be multiple choice. You have to select either A, B, C, or D. You choose one. This exam is going to test an individual's knowledge and skills required to interpret a basic SysML model of a system covering system behavior, system structure, and requirements, as well as some cross-cutting constructs. 36% of the test is system structure, 30% of the test is system behavior, 20% is cross-cutting topics, and 14% is requirements. Now we'll jump into the system structure in more detail. The model user exam is going to be testing you over the SysML syntax, specifically 36% on this system structure. Remember that we have four behavioral diagrams in SysML, the block definition diagram, the internal block diagram, the package diagram, and the parametric diagram. All of these four different diagrams are going to be on the test. Topics which are heavily repeated include the elements of definition versus elements of usage, as well as understanding the diagram header. Now we'll move on to the system behavior. There are four different behavioral diagrams in SysML, and all four of the diagrams will be on the exam. You see here three different diagrams, the activity diagram, the state machine diagram, and the sequence diagram. The other behavioral diagram, the use case diagram, will be lumped in with the requirements in this breakdown. Topics which have repeated questions and you need to understand include the activity partitions in the activity diagram, understanding the entry, do, and exit behaviors on a state machine diagram, and understanding the difference between the asynchronous and synchronous messages on a sequence diagram. Now jumping over to the cross-cutting topics and requirements on the exam. The cross-cutting topics is going to talk a lot about the allocate relationship and the directionality of that allocate relationship. You will also talk about the requirement diagram and the use case diagram. So now we will have gone through each of the nine SysML diagrams, the four behavioral diagrams, the four structural diagrams, and the one requirement diagram type. One aspect of the exam which is also repeated a lot is the directionality of relationships. So for the requirements diagram, you need to understand the directionality of the arrow for the derive, verify, satisfy, refine, and trace relationships. For the block definition diagram, you need to understand the directionality of the generalization relationship and the directed composition relationship. Some recommended study materials include the Practical Guide to SysML and SysML Distilled. Cameo Magic also offers the Model User Practice Exam, which is going to be 90 questions and answers with detailed rationale. The format is going to be the same as the actual certification exam and have the correct amount of conceptual questions and diagram questions. 
click on the link in the description or on the video and this will link you to where you can purchase this exam. After taking the model user exam, you can take the SysML Model Builder Fundamental Level 2 exam. The Model Builder Fundamental exam is similar to the Model User exam in the fact that the question format and answer is the same. Still multiple choice, choose one. However, the passing score is a little bit higher, but you do get a little bit of extra time. You get 105 minutes instead of just the 90 minutes. I thought the level two exam was slightly easier than the level one exam because the level two exam is much more conceptual rather than SysML syntax, which can be a little bit tricky. You can see that we've got 57% of the exam is modeling structure and behavior. 19% of the exam is model concepts and constructs. 16% of the exam is modeling requirements and 8% is capabilities and features. We'll jump into more detail about the modeling structure and behavior. So we've got 24% which is going to be behavioral modeling, 23% which is going to be structural modeling, and then 10% dedicated to parametric modeling. Again, these questions are more conceptual, so it's going to be asking you after you've created the block definition uh, decomposition of the system, you'd like to create the connections between the parts. How would you do that? And your answer would be creating an internal block diagram. A common question format for this test is given this diagram, they give you a diagram, what would you do next? And then they say A, B, C, D with different options of how to model next. Jumping to the modeling concepts and constructs, we have 10% modeling concepts and 9% modeling constructs. We'll remember that a diagram is a view or perspective of the model. You can't actually view the model. You have to view diagrams. Additionally, you can look at the package diagram to decompose the model structure while you would look at the block definition diagram to decompose the system of interest structure. So now we'll deal with building a requirements model using the basic set of SysML constructs at 16% of the exam and allocations and stereotypes which are going to be 8% of the exam. I would focus on the requirements relationships, including refine, verify, satisfy, and trace, and figuring out what model elements those relationships go between. Additionally, I would look at how to apply a stereotype and when to apply it. Some recommended study materials include the Practical Guide to SysML and SysML Distilled. At the release of this video, we only offer level one, level three, and level four exams. We do not offer level two. If there is enough demand, we will release it on our website. So check it out. Now that we've passed the model user and model builder fundamental exam, we can take the model builder intermediate exam. The exam format is the same as level two in the fact that you have 105 minutes and 90 questions. The passing score is lower though, it is only 61%. I found this exam to be significantly more difficult than the level one and level two exams. The level three exam is 33% building a behavioral model, 29% building a structural model, 12% model concepts and organization, 11% parametric modeling, 10% modeling requirements, and 5% stereotypes, properties, and constraints. We'll go ahead and jump into the details of building a behavioral model with the full set of SysML constructs. So we've got three separate breakdowns, the activity diagram, the sequence diagram, and the state machine diagram. I recommend you pause the video and note down all of the specific elements you need to study. Now we'll move from the behavioral modeling to the structural modeling. 29% of the exam is building a structural model with the full set of SysML constructs. These constructs are broken up into building the block definition diagram and building the internal block diagram. We'll pause and let you read through all of the items listed. 
We'll now move on to look at the model concepts and model organization, as well as building a parametric model with the full set of SysML constructs. The model concepts questions are going to be purely text questions about guidelines and practices, while the model organization will likely be more diagram questions about package diagrams. The parametric model questions normally have a parametric diagram and some sort of question about how to improve the parametric diagram or identify how the parametric is incorrect. Next, we'll look at building a requirements model with the full set of SysML constructs, as well as stereotypes, properties, and constraints. When building a requirements diagram using the full set of SysML constructs, you need to know about the specialized requirements, as well as the relationships that go along with these requirements, such as you need to know that a functional requirement would attach to a behavioral element, such as an activity and a performance requirement would connect to a value property. Use cases will also be covered. Use cases in connecting them to behavioral models such as activity diagrams and state machines as well as requirements will be on the exam. And there'll be one or two questions about stereotypes, properties, or constraints. The best way to study for these exams would be reading through the Practical Guide to SysML or SysML Distilled and you can purchase our Model Builder Intermediate Practice Exam from our website. It allows you access to an almost three hour video of answers with all the rationale as well. Once you've passed the level three exam, you can go ahead and take the level four, the Model Builder Advanced Exam. This exam is going to be more conceptual and high level than the level three exam. It's going to be more similar to the level two exam because it's conceptual. Level one and level three are more syntactical, more syntax driven. The format to the level four exam is very similar to all the other exams. The passing score is going to be 64 out of 90 or 71 percent. In my experience, this level four exam was easier than the level three exam but harder than the level two exam. Now looking at the exam context, we got 35% is methodology concepts, 25% is metamodeling, profiles, model libraries, and viewpoints, 20% is SysML with other modeling languages, and 20% is SysML tool integration and tool selection. First, we'll look at methodology concepts, which is 35% of the exam. These questions are somewhat uh, straightforward and uh, high level. They're easy to answer sometimes because you would want to just abide by a standard and remain consistent from team to team. You want all of your teams to use the same methodology. That methodology needs to have documentation behind it, etc. Now we'll look at some of the concepts for adapting and extending SysML. We need to look at customizing the language, how to do that, metamodel based extensions of SysML, profiles, and model libraries. Next is 20% of the exam where we need to understand how SysML connects with other languages such as UML, MARTE, UPDM, MTM, and Modelica. The last 20% of the exam is SysML tool integration and tool selection. So what software are you going to use to run your SysML? So we've got the tool integration approaches and we've got model interchange and we have tool selection. The recommended study materials for this exam include a practical guide to SysML and SysML Distilled. Both texts are excellent, as well as purchasing the Model Builder Advanced Practice Exam. This is representative of the actual exam with the question formats the same and the answers have rationale as well. The SysML Model User Exam, the level one, is meant for 
personnel to be productive contributors to the team, such as junior systems engineers. The level two exam, the SysML model builder fundamental, is meant for domain specific engineers to also be productive contributors, such as like a reliability engineer or a quality test engineer. The level three, the model builder intermediate exam is meant for lead systems engineers who contribute independently to the model. The level four exam is meant for SysML or MBSE SMEs who are trying to extend the penetration of MBSE into new departments at an enterprise level. We hope that this video is a helpful guide to understanding the context of each of these different certification exams that OMG provides and good luck studying.